Okay, let's try again. <laughs> Give everybody a couple of minutes to log on here and hopefully you're seeing on your end um, a nice uh, pick. Oh, are you there, Kelly? You should be able to see it. So I'm gonna be having uh, my friend Kelly. What happens, y'all, when I do this? If I do this. Oh, see, it doesn't wanna let me rotate my phone. Okay, <laughs> you can get upside down. Tammy, I see you watching. Rick, I see you watching. Who else is in? Anybody else in the group yet? Hey, Dad. Let's see if Kelly is on yet. She's saying, I see her. Okay, let me just add you, Kelly. Hang on just a second. Oh, there she is. Y'all, I'm so excited. Hey, Kelly. Hey, other Kelly. Hey, Robin. Um, we're adding Kelly on. I cannot wait for y'all to hear this Hi. amazing Hi. story. There she is. I'm so excited. Yay. Hey, I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, yes, loving all the likes. So, y'all, here's the deal. I ran across Kelly. I think it just it was just a Facebook forum somewhere, and I saw her story, and I about fell to the floor, guys. Like I was like, oh my gosh, that so much of your story is my story. And the thing is, we're not just two people that are alone. Like there are so many people um who have fought this mental and physical battle of obesity um most of us for a lot of our lives some people maybe it's new to them maybe they're just kind of the hit 40 and boom it just kind of <laughs> kind of came up on them but um the thing is when i saw your story and i found out that you had written a book about your journey i was like i absolutely have to share this with all of my friends and everybody that i know and kelly when we chatted um, you were so gracious to um, send me a copy of your book, and I have loved it. Oh, good. Like, oh, good. I wanted to just cry just now, like literally the emotion, because um, there is so much goodness in this book and so much pain, and there's tragedy, but there's also brilliance and overcoming and just that warrior survivor <laughs> story and when you're a survivor which i really believe so many people are survivors that they don't even realize they are right. survivors right. um and they 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 uh don't give themselves necessarily the credit because we always have that inner negative critic that's going to town um but i want to show you guys if you do not have this book you need to go buy it like that is your number one priority absolutely robin it's hope okay like with the death of hope you are in trouble, but just like you talked about, Kelly, you talked about in the book about Pandora's box. Right. And I loved that you took the time to break it down because how many people go, oh, don't open Pandora's box, but they don't really go and dig deep. And I'm going to save that story because I want people to read it mm -hmm. within the book. There's right. so many great things and I don't want to give away all of the good nuggets. But what I do want to do is... um. I want to tell y'all a little about Kelly. I want her to share a little of her story. Um, I want her to get, have the opportunity to um, encourage you guys and let you know that you're not alone because dealing with obesity is not something to sneeze at. Um, dealing with adversity, period, is nothing to sneeze at. And um, it is a process. It's a physical process, a mental process, a spiritual process. I mean, there's, it's everything involved, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Kelly, I'm going to let you take it away. I do have a few questions for you, but I want you to share. And then whatever kind of doesn't come out, I want to, um, I'll ask you a few questions as we go. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And My pleasure. Um, I mean, do you want me to start back? Where do you want me to start? <laughs> well, I think that um, it's important for people to know, like, we'll kind of, let's fast forward them a little bit. So, okay. so you and I share something in common that we were, we were pretty bullied as we were um, not only growing up, but especially as the weight started compiling on. And I, I don't, like you, I don't, 
I didn't have a weight issue. I was more a big boned person when I was in elementary and junior high. And then my hormones hit in high school. So I wasn't huge. I just, but I wasn't small and tiny either. Right. Um, oh, the author, that's who we're talking to. Kelly Gunter. <laughs> Y'all go to her website, kellygunter.com. You can also go to you have such a pretty face, um, dot com, which how many times have you heard that one, oh. Kelly? <laughs> So many times. I mean, that's why, you know, and I share this in the book that everybody would say it to me. My own friends, you know, would say, oh, Kelly, it's just such a shame. You have such a pretty face, you know, as if my entire existence was just a loss because I wasn't packaged in a body that they found attractive. And right. I used to say all the time that you know, one day I'm going to lose this weight. And when I do, I'm going to write a book and the title is going to be, you have such a pretty face because I, love I mean, I have a lot of missions in life, but one of them is to let people who don't realize I get so many messages from people who say, Oh my gosh, like I say that to people. I didn't realize it was hurtful. I didn't realize that, you know, it wasn't really a compliment. And so we all know that any of us who have had that said to us, oh, you have such a pretty face, or if you just lose weight, you know, because you have such a pretty face. I mean, it's not a compliment on any level. I do believe that some people just don't get it. And so they don't realize when they're saying it, that it's not a compliment and that it hurts. And so for me, it took me 16 years to write the book. But once I finally wrote the book, and there were a couple of other books out there that were fiction that had a similar title. And I said, I don't care. This is my title. As long as legally I can still use the name, I, that's my name. Like there was no other right. name I could have came up with that would have touched me the way that one did. And I get yeah. all the time from people who just explain it. Oh, my mom said it to me all the time. Or my grandma said it to me all the time. You know, I heard all the time, you have such a pretty face. And um, I think it's just so hurtful. We don't get over those things and you were talking about that perhaps we weren't um, huge in high school, but that doesn't mean you don't get bullied for not fitting in like everybody else. And you right. don't even realize at the time how many of our own friends actually did the bullying. So, you know, you kind of look back and say, were they really friends? But um, it becomes so second nature you take the, the little slams and they're at your expense. And because those are your friends, that's your circle. And you don't really realize until I think you find yourself worth and you get to that place. And then you start to realize, wow, you know, those A, weren't friends. And B, the truth is so often clothed in jest. People say, I'm just kidding, girl. You know, I don't mean it. No, they do mean it. And, you know, those those comments and those statements hurt, and they hurt for a long time to come. Right. And I think, you know, as, I, as you were just saying that, it was making me think about the judgment. And I don't care who you are. I mean, we, we um, it's like in our nature to have this judgment, you know, and mostly caused by pain and hurt that we've had in our own right. lives. You know, as you let every, so many people say hurt people, hurt people. It's so true. But like, right. I want to give an example and I'm just being really honest and real. Okay. okay. Like this All is right. some raw stuff, was, but you know, this I'm person, real. okay. So y'all, this is Kelly. This That's is me. Kelly's before, right? <laughs> that was me. Okay. Doctor. That so actually, that picture is the picture the day before my surgery that taken right. at the doctor's office. So that person I can relate to all day long. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know this person. Right. This person is miserable, sad, putting on a brave face, exactly. very courageous, but nobody would really know because inside I'm just wrestling. Right. But when you see this, when you're, when you're still in this body, when you're still in this body. Right. And you see this and you don't know anything about this person, it is easy to be judgmental and go, yeah. oh, well, she's got it all. Oh, she's got everything. Look how yeah. gorgeous and beautiful and pretty. And she's amazing. And she's got the body. You know, you talked about the, uh, the size six panty that your, that your um, son's dad wanted to have. And I can completely oh relate to that like, um, struggle. Oh. 
that still makes me a, a crazy person when I hear it. And Haunt, it's haunting because it's not like it's not like you sit there and go, "Oh, I want to be, I want to be a size six yeah, pig." Who doesn't know what that? that? <laughs> was. You know, I was like, "What are you talking about?" And you know, so for me, but I never lost that. I mean, look, this is at this point we had split up um, in '96. So look how long ago that was, like 22 years ago. And yeah. I still remember that conversation like it was yesterday. You know, I could be faithful to you if you were a size six panty. Like, it's just insane. Obviously, blaming my physical condition on his poor behavior. And at the time, though, you absorb that. And even though you consciously know, cognitively, I knew come on, like, this isn't it. But I still absorbed all of that, you know, because right. you're just encumbered with low self-esteem. You feel terrible about yourself. You don't feel like you're worthy. You don't feel pretty. And so it's just incredibly difficult. And those words seep into your soul. And then you end up in a plethora of hurtful situations and bad relationships that just aren't really for you because you're not, you don't yeah. stand up for yourself and be like, you know what? You know, I mean, eventually it kicked in for me, not to the level, you know, that I am today, but eventually I did, you know, say, I'd rather be alone than go through this with you. I know I highlighted that line. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Lots of highlighting and underlining in this book. Um, you guys, if you have not gone to Kelly's page, please go like her page. Um, I promise you, if, if this isn't a message you need to hear, somebody you know needs to hear this. So if you will share this live video, you can just go down and, and you'll see the little link. You can share this to your page too so people can see that what we're talking about. And the thing is, is that beauty is, is you know, they always say, um, oh, what is the exact phrase about being skin deep? You know, beauty um, is more than being just skin deep. I think that... Um, People need to realize we have a lot of beautiful people, like beautiful society, worldly people who are uglier oh. than I have ever seen. Girl. And we have people who don't do not fit the worldly mode m mold who are the most beautiful people I have ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, what I want people to know about you, Kelly, is that in the short amount of time that, that we've had an opportunity to speak um, on Facebook and, and then even just in reading your book, I mean, you really, you are, you are authentic, you are real, you're not afraid to share the, the bad crap, um, the truth. And I think it's important for people on any kind of a um, adverse journey in life is to to do their best at being authentic. You know, we wear these masks in life. For us, it's, it was weight, you know, or for me, it is weight. Like, it, it's a mask. It protects me. It keeps me safe. Um, at least that is the thing that I have told myself over life, right? So some people know this about me. Some people don't, that I had a gastric sleeve. Um, I actually had a lap band that was failed, I had four procedures to finally have it removed. And then I had a gastric sleeve in um, the end of 2010. I lost some weight. I never reached my goal weight, but I felt better about myself. Um, and then had two more babies and also emotionally didn't deal with some of those things that I needed to deal with. And you talk about that in the book. Um, and I want to know... What gave you the most hope, like past those negative demons in your mind, those, um, the, the negative self-talk, the stuff that's the disbelief saying like, I can't do this or I'm not going to do this. And I know that underlying you had that warrior spirit, but what can you share with people that would help them maybe in their journey, whether they have five pounds to lose or 500 pounds to lose to continue to pull themselves back on track? so that they keep running that race? I think for me, what was always able to keep me on track was I had just made up my mind. I had had enough. I had decided this is what I want. And so I 
for the first year after my surgery, I did precisely every single thing the surgeon said to do. I, I knew I had a small window of time to lose the weight. And so for that first year, I love your water bottle, by the way. <laughs> Y'all need one of these too. It's perfect. <laughs> I love mine. But um, I struggle with drinking my water, actually. So if I put fruit and everything in there and it looks good, I have a much better chance of drinking my water because I'm bad about Diet Coke. But anyway, <laughs> you know, that's just true. Confession. Um, but so for me, it was just really, we all have obstacles. We fall off paths sometimes, but we have to keep our eyes on the goal and what we really, really want. And I think when we have, when we struggle with low self-esteem and low self-worth, then it makes it really easy to say, I can't do this. Nothing's ever going to be good in my life again. Like my best days are behind me, or maybe I've never had my best days. Some people feel that way. And it's easy to come up with a lot of excuses why we're not going to fight hard for the life we want. It's, it's easy. We, we all do it. I've done it. I've done it right. You know, in the process of writing this book. I would get overwhelmed and I'd say, you know, I can't do this. What am I thinking? You know, no one's going to like relate to the book when all I wanted was people to find themselves in the pages. And so whether it's, you know, writing the book, whether it's trying to stay on track with your weight loss, none of us are perfect. I post on my page all the time. The other Sunday, which I always make a free day for me, I don't call them cheat days because for me, life is just about finding your way and finding what works for you. And I, I myself, right. I can't go a long time and feel deprived or it's going to be a disaster. There is going to be sugar into this body all over the place. I mean, if I deprive myself. <laughs> so I've learned to let myself, I just try to eat healthy more days during a week than I don't. And that works for me. But the other day I posted a video of me making this homemade cinnamon bread and grilling it and the like drizzle and stuff. And Ryo, I got all these messages. Oh, how can you say you do that? Because I'm real, <laughs> because I'm not a robot and I eat the things I like sometimes. And then I counterbalance that with eating healthy and working out. So it's the same thing when you want your goal though. Like I don't want to gain the weight back. I don't want to get that back there. So for me, right. even when I have a bad couple days, and sometimes maybe I have a bad couple weeks, but I just focus on what I really want. And I have to sometimes have to really remind myself that I'm my best commodity and I need to take care of me because nobody else is going to. And it sounds so simple. I mean, when I was nine pounds away from 400 pounds and it, you know, I could say, I love me. I want to take care of me. I'm my best commodity. But at the end of the day, we just have to, but I didn't really believe in myself. You know, I didn't. So the surgery was a tool that yeah. helped me get there. And then as the book says, I had 16 years of self-destructive behavior because I didn't heal what was going on inside of me. So my weight was like right. the branches of the tree, but the roots were in a, a mess. So when I lost the weight, like the branches looked better, but the roots were still a mess. So until, so I just started having other branches of poor behavior. I couldn't do it with food anymore, but I started branching out, you know, whether I was shopping too much or, you know, dating the wrong men or gambling or whatever you want it to be. You know, I found other ways to basically have that self-destructive behavior because I hadn't healed what was going on on the inside. And I was, Right. complete and total denial about it and I understand not everybody thank God has the trauma in their childhood that I had and thankfully that doesn't affect everybody and people have their own reasons but there's no way you go through life a morbidly obese person and you don't have some trauma that you need to heal there's just no way even if your right. trauma comes from being mistreated by people because you were morbidly obese even if that's your trauma you know, there's something in there to heal. And I just try to encourage everybody because I lived in denial of my trauma my whole life. And what did it do? It nearly killed me. And so that's why I'm honest. Life is so much easier when you're just genuine and honest. You know, I had uh, a mean girl on my page about a week ago saying, oh my God, 
all your your pictures they're you know photoshopped and you like use filters and I was like yes who doesn't you know I mean you know <laughs> I wrote a blog about it I said you know newsflash I'm not airbrushed in person if when you meet me in person I'm not gonna look airbrushed you know I'm not walking around the world airbrushed exactly this is hundred percent and I'm gonna keep using filters because I like to and I can if I want to I mean so but you know who who is someone to come onto someone else's page and say oh that picture is photoshopped who does that I mean a lot of people do that but yes when, like you were saying, when I meet people in person, the thing they always say to me is, oh my God, you're so much prettier in person. And up to the point that I would say to my best friend, like, wow, are my pictures really a mess? Because I constantly get this from people. But I think it's because, in <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought my pictures were okay. And then I get these comments from people in person and I think, wow, my pictures must be bad. And, but I think it's because you can't, get a soul you can't get a personality from a picture yes <laughs> absolutely yeah, even from a video but when you meet somebody in person and they come to life so and I love that because I think you talk a lot about about our soul mm -hmm. our spirit our drive and and I think um, you know, no matter what your spiritual faith or belief is you know and you and I share a common faith but um, no matter what it is, there is a divinity in our soul right. and God has got this wrapped up in a nutshell and it's at the core. And that is the part of us that gets up each day wanting to fight and survive, right. you know, the, the humanity in us and the skin, you know, you know, I've had friends I called Jesus with skin on, you know, because they were just such a light and they were so exuberant. But at the end of the day, God, it comes down to their soul. You know, it's that core. And you talk a lot about that in the book. Um, and so, and someone just asked, I think it's a great question to ask because I really think it goes down to the soul. And that is, how do you heal? How do you heal those parts of you? Like, um, here, I think it's Lisa that's asked. Yeah, Lisa's asking for, like, in your book, do you have some, you know, practical tips on staying focused? There are tips, and there's all kinds of stuff, and you can write down the stuff. And, and I'm not trying to negate that question. It's important. But if you do not get down to the emotional root of it, none of those tips, none of those tools in your toolbox will work for you. Tools are tools. They have to be picked up and they have to be used. But if we don't heal from the inside out while we're using the tools, there's not going to be that um, end result or goal met that I think that people are looking for with weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. It is a not a quick fix. Mm -hmm. It is a not the easy way out. Matter of fact, I would beg to differ. It is the absolute opposite. <laughs> Because it is a constant battle, even if you regain weight, um, it's a constant mental battle because people who struggle with this, um, yes, you got to fill back your, your cup. And so how, how would you suggest, um, one of the things that you've done is you, you've healed. I mean, not that it's a journey, you know, like we still struggle every day. Don't get me wrong, but you've really become very self-aware, which to me is a very important thing to healing, um, knowing yourself and not allowing those outer things, but how would you suggest that people begin to heal in the healing process? Um, I think that's a great question. <laughs> um, but for me, what I really wanted to impart for people about healing was I was determined, like you said, we have this mask of my life is perfect. Everything's good. Oh, she's got it all together. But I, I really didn't. And, you know, to, to the outside world I did, but I really didn't. And for me, because I didn't seek out that, that pain and I didn't try to get to, you know, my life was destroyed. I mean, and so I went off to, I share in the book, Sedona, Arizona for treatment and to figure out, you know, what is really going on with me. And at the time when I left for Sedona, a friend said to me, and I think I share this in the book, a friend said, whatever you do out there, just be honest. And I thought, 
Um, okay. But as I was sitting on the plane en route to Sedona, knowing my trauma, knowing that no one knew, my best friends didn't know, the, the men I was involved with didn't know. I kept that secret in the chamber of my soul and held on to it because I thought that, you know, I'm a licensed social worker. I'm a counselor. I do this for other people. I may have been a victim, but I've got myself. I'm not a victim anymore, and I'm handling it. So I held on to those secrets, and I lived in that shame, that secret shame that survivors of sexual abuse live in. And so <laughs> on that plane ride, I was thinking, I'll share everything, but I'm not going to share that. And because the, I thought there's no way. I did. I mean, I walked into the place where I went, and I thought, you know, I'll tell them all of this, all my destructive behaviors, but I'm not sharing that. And it took a few days, but they were better than me. <laughs> they were, they zeroed in on, um, on what had to, I mean, they were very, very excellent trained people. And my therapist was completely on target and she wouldn't, you know, she kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until I finally, like I had, at one point I was sitting there just silent for what felt like hours. It was over an hour. I just refused to speak because my soul was so traumatized to finally open up and say, yes, this happened, you know? And then once I finally did that, just more and more and more <laughs> memories just, you know, overwhelming and so thankfully I was there I was in great hands and it wasn't until I could honestly disclose all of that that I could begin to, to heal and healing is a life term mm -hmm. journey it isn't something oh got there done now I can go do this like like running a race <laughs> we continue to heal, continue to um move forward and and it and it makes you it changes everything in your life absolutely everything i had always loved god i always had a close relationship with god but i didn't even trust god that i could heal you know i held on to it and that was that so when you begin to heal and you begin to really just be like this is who i am this is my genuine, actual self. And if you don't like me, it's okay. I can tell you that when I was, the man I was involved with, the one, there's a letter to him in the book, you know, the letter in the back, that letter. Yeah. I've gotten so many messages from women who are like, I copied and pasted like you know, <laughs> these paragraphs and sent it to someone. And um, my best friend, Lori, from the book, she said, this letter is going to go viral <laughs> when I, when she yes. it in the editing process. But um, I never had the conversation with that man. I never said, hey, you know, what exactly are we? Like, I wouldn't push that because I was too afraid of the answer. You know, I was afraid he'll reject me. And so I was willing to take whatever he was giving me because I didn't think that I was worthy for anything else. And that wasn't like I honestly was sitting there saying, I'm not worthy. I mean, it goes so much deeper than that. Right. Today, yeah. the way I live today, although it's been two, almost two years since I went to Sedona and I still haven't dated anybody. I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on my healing. And I know when the time is right, God will bring the right person to me. I'm, I'm excited for that because I, I can't even imagine what it will be like to have an open, honest relationship where I can just genuinely be who I am, where I can say, what are, what are we doing? What are we? How do you actually feel about me? Because if I don't like the answer I get, I know I'm going to be okay and I'm going to be able to Right. and keep moving and I don't have to worry about um oh what if he doesn't care about me on the same level and I think at this day and age I think I would pick totally different men from the start <laughs> because I'm the You're right so to kind of just yeah. circle back to her question how do you start that healing I just you know everybody is different and I I just inhale
it's all kind of workbooks to work through trauma. For me, I recommend for anybody, I think the whole world should be in therapy. I mean, it was such a life-changing situation for me. And I still have counseling with Mm -hmm. a person in Sedona because I want to keep becoming my very, very, very best self. You know, I want to keep healing. There's, of course, things I struggle with. I'm human. I've been through a lot in my life. And, um, but so, but some people aren't going to be able to get counseling. And I understand that. So, you know, there are so many resources out there though, that they can at least start their healing on their own if they don't want to go to counseling yet. And there's even counseling online. So I just think that figure out what the root of it is. You know, I packed up and went to Sedona and still, still didn't realize as a licensed social worker with a master's degree in clinical counseling, I still didn't think all my problems were because of my trauma. I, I associated them with everything else. I didn't associate them at all with my trauma. And that's what it was all about. Right. Yeah, it's it's amazing how we can <clears throat> can we can walk through life and we think we have it ourselves figured out and then you have these very gut-wrenching aha moments Ooh. that are like, "Oh my gosh, I just had to look at myself in the face and tell myself like and it, and it's not it's not like you're saying it's not that it's different than the negative self-talk The negative self-talk are the tapes, you know, that play and they start, your mind is racing. Right. This is when you look at yourself in the mirror and you say something, for example, like here's the struggle that I faced um, last year is uh, you're lazy. Like you're adverse to hard work sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Like that is something I had to really face. I was like, oh, well, crap. I don't want to, I didn't want to know that. Well, that's fine, but I still had to get down to the why. Why am I adverse to hard work? Well, guess what I figured out? I didn't think I deserved it. The result that right. comes from hard work, right? Right. right. Success, uh, you know, success in whoever's mind, whether it be mine or, or the world or whatnot. And so you have to start dealing with some things. And it's not the upper level. It's all that stuff underneath. So so what I would say are, are some practical applications that people can take, you know, from what you're sharing and, and things that maybe they don't have access to counseling. But I'll tell you, um, you know, you guys, I, I'm sure Kelly would say this too, is, is we're, we're both pretty much open book. So, you know, if you're on my page for the first time, please go like my page and follow me. If you're on Kelly's, if you're learning about Kelly for the first time, go on her page and like her. Um, and send us a message because I can tell you, I can give you resource after resource after resource of places that you can go that either don't cost money or are, are not a lot of money. And if you're a person that's like, you know what? Okay. I have the finances. I want to dig in and really like ramrod this. Um, I've got resources for you there too. So, um, a great place to start if you're just joining us or you haven't seen much, a great place to start is right here. (laughs) <laughs> this book are serious and in all seriousness and the reason I, y'all I read a lot I wasn't a reader when I was a kid because with ADHD I couldn't I, I would read and I wouldn't retain it and I, ne- I never understood I just thought I hated reading yeah. but then I realized I didn't hate reading like I actually really love to read because but I even love more like personal development and personal growth and and I really love stories I love the underdog and overcoming adversity. And because this is every single person on the planet, the ones who aren't is just because they're not admitting it. Right. <laughs> so, right. Um, the reason I love this book is because you cover everything from your journey, getting to surgery, the decision to have surgery, how God opened doors like OMG, oh, capital G get to get to surgery. Like, Whoa. And then the recovery and the recovery, as you said, it wasn't surgery. And after surgery was the recovery, it was surgery. There was a physical healing of recovery. And then there was a whole nother level of recovery. And then there was, you know, the plastic surgery component and the plastic surgery component, you know, people don't know um, weight loss surgery or really for, for that fact, And I hope you won't mind me showing, do you mind me showing this picture where you show your body lift? Okay. So when you have 
put your body in duress and you've stretched out that skin and then you lose weight, whether you lose it slow, fast, people say if you lose it slow, it's better. I've, I've done it both ways. And I can tell you, it doesn't necessarily really matter. Especially, I mean, I've had seven biological babies in my belly. So that <laughs> right. doesn't bode for a whole, you know, pretty flat stomach. But I want to show you that after the 240, it's 43, right? 243 pounds of weight loss. So this is what Kelly was facing. Can y'all see this? This is what Kelly was facing before. And that's after the weight loss. Like she was pretty much done with her weight loss mm -hmm. at this point, right? right? But check this out, y'all. Okay. Now I can tell you when I was 19, I had gained 60 pounds in one year. I'd started the Depo-Provera shot and the hormones just went Woo, like crazy on me. I gained 60 pounds in a year. I lost some of it. And then because I was a singer and a performer, I had all this skin. And so I had a tummy tuck. And this is before babies. I thought it was the most excruciating pain I had ever been through. And at 19, it was, you know, <laughs> you got tubes hanging out for the drain tubes and they're, they put the tape all over your body. And when they peel that stuff off, it is uh, definitely worse than a bikini wax. <laughs> um, and I, I'll just be honest. I can't imagine going through a full body lift and a thigh lift. And I want to know what that's like. I want to know what is that recovery compared to the recovery of weight loss surgery, which is not easy to say the least. Um, you said often that you regretted that for a little while after, because it was so hard. Um, what was the plastic surgery recovery like? Because it is, it was, it is a physical necessity. It's not like, oh, let me make my body look more amazing. The skin hangs down and it can cause actual physical discomfort. It ca can cause rashes and um, lesions and blisters. And there's a lot of stuff that people don't realize the ramifications of extra skin on your body. Right. I actually had, and I think I share this in the book, that my skin, the skin rubbing on top of the skin would get to rot. So it was like terrible smell, all the slimy stuff. And my doc, I would try everything. I'd put powder there. I'd put cornstarch. I'd put a, like a cloth, like a handkerchief or something there. And my bariatric surgeon just said, you have to have this skin removed. He had some big medical name for what it's called. But skin isn't supposed to be on top of skin. And skin isn't supposed to rub on skin. So it causes a lot of problems. And um, I think one thing that I want to say before I talk about the plastic surgery is, though, like the pictures that you showed. I thought, the long, as I continued in my weight loss, I was at my goal weight, but I still I looked like that. So I thought, I mean, it looks like you're still fat. If you look at that picture, you don't realize that skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, y'all look at this. I mean, this is, what, 150 pounds-ish? Yeah. People think, I mean, like, you look at, I, I'm trying to point to it, like, you can see my finger, but you can't. Um, <laughs> you, I know. You see, I mean, on that picture from the front, that just looks like you still have weight to lose. And because people think that skin is just this, thin little layer and it's not because there's a lot of tissue and everything that goes with it. So, I mean, when I had the skin removed, it was 11 pounds additional weight when, the, when he did my, wow. my stomach. And, but to answer your question about, um, um, but I wanted to say this too, before I finish that, like a good plastic surgeon, when I went into my first plastic surgeon looking like that, the one who did my body lift, I said, well, I don't know, like maybe I need to lose more weight. The second he touched me, he's like, you don't have any more weight to lose. I mean, they can tell, like they can look at you and touch you and tell there's fat in here or this is all skin and tissue. And um, so anyway, surgery, I did the body lift and the thigh lift together and it was excruciating pain. <laughs> it was just horrific. It was worse than <laughs> childbirth. It was worse than my bariatric ah! And you know, you know the, um, what everything that happened after my bariatric surgery. I mean, I kind of, I'm not going to yeah. tell that because that's a, re, a, like a big part of the book, you know, but, um, yeah. after my bariatric surgery, I had severe complications to say the least. And, um, but, and so that was a very difficult recovery, but that body lift that I went through with the thigh lift was the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. 
and I've been through childbirth. <laughs> so right. that recovery was hell. And at the time, uh, actually a TV station did um, broadcast my surgery and they did my follow-up for six months, a news station um, in Cincinnati and Kentucky. Uh, and so they would call me and check on me. They were actually in the OR when I had my surgery and they were just following up and then they did their final show six months later. But about a month in, um, I was still in bed. My first waking thought every single day when I woke up was, ow, because I just was still in so much pain. And my surgeon called me because I lived about an hour and 20 minutes from his office. And his staff would call me all the time to check on me. And he called me one day and he said his staff was really worried about me. And I was just in so much pain and so miserable. I was screaming like a lunatic on the phone to him. I was like, where are the TV cameras now? I said, <laughs> I did. I said, get them up here. I said, people need to know I'm in hell. You know, I mean, I just was in misery and I was on the damn news. You know, I mean, I was so <laughs> like, I mean, it was just miserable. And that was the truth. And, um, but I will say this. I'm so glad I did it. I mean, absolutely worth it. Is it a difficult recovery? Yes. People reach out to me all the time and they said, oh my God, I just had my body lift. And, you know, they have to make it really, really tight. You, they redo your muscles. They re, if they do it right, there's a lot of people who don't do it right. They redo your muscles to get your muscles super tight. I couldn't even stand up straight. I had to walk bent over. It was so tight. And probably for six mm -hmm. months when I would stand up, I was like, oh, it would remind me, like, don't just pop up because you feel it. But it has to be that way so that as you stretch out and you get back to life, that you have a good result. And so, right. but I wasn't prepared. And, and I will say this too, I'm a pansy. So there's a problem <laughs> I am. And so there are probably I, people. I somehow doubt that considering I've been in not even a full body lift <laughs> shoes, but just, just tummy tuck shoes. Like I still compare it. I've had out of these seven babies that I have delivered, I've done, let me think at one, two, three, four of them natural and just completely <laughs> with absolutely nothing. And, and two with what I thought was an epidural that ended up failing. So like, but, and the last one was Oh, off the charts. I mean, Phoenix, oh my gosh, that kid's three now. And I, I still remember it like yesterday, but so I don't, I golly, a pansy, like that is crazy. How long, how long would you say that that, that recovery process is? And would you say that, I mean, like you said, it's worth it. Here's something I want to talk to people about because there are people who think, Okay, I've got 50, let's say 50. Now you had 240, 250 pounds loose. Yeah. As I said earlier, that is literally my body. You took me off of you. <laughs> like that is insane and that awesome. Every day. And there are definite situations where, where I think weight loss surgery is the only answer. Mm -hmm. It is the only way and the only answer for so many people that are out there. Um, for some... I think that weight loss surgery, um, they don't do all of the necessary research on it. And they do think it's going to be the quick fix. They do think it's going to be their way out. They do think it's going to be, oh, I can get this done, no big deal. But one thing, um, and I forget the exact phrase, but it's something like the pain, the pain of discipline, you know, versus the pain of um, regret, you know, right. something like that. Like the pain of discipline is not is not greater than the pain of regret. And so... My question is, do you think that the physical pain and the emotional pain of the surgeries, the everything you went through with the regular surgery, which again, we'll save that for the book, but, um, and then the daily, you know, and pain of, of your um, recovery and plastic surgeries and recovery after that, do you think that that was worth the exchange of a daily pain of discipline? Um and action against, let's say, going, you know, getting to that gym every day and making sure that the mental 
discipline when you love food and you deal with it as an emotional hole filler, <laughs> which is an addict, by the way, yeah. <laughs> um, that do you think it's worth it? Do you, and in the end, if you can look back and say, if I had just versus the ultimate goal of the surgeries combined. Do you think that that exchange for you, obviously at 250 you know, pounds to lose, probably worth it. Do you think for someone looking to let's say lose 50 pounds or 40, which I think now they'll let people do a gastric sleeve with, with only about, I say only 40 is a lot, but it's not a lot in the scheme of things. So what do you, how do you feel about that? I think that people should be allowed to do whatever they want to do to feel better about themselves. So for some people losing, love 40 or, losing 40 or 50 pounds is just as hard and they feel just as terrible about themselves as I did needing to lose 243 pounds. So I think whatever anybody wants to do to feel better about themselves and to get themselves into a better physical situation, emotional situation, if that's someone's choice, then I support them in that. You know, the world had a fit when Mariah Carey allegedly had a gastric sleeve or whatever. And I, people ask me about it all the time. And I said, you know, she exists in a world where if you're not a certain size, you could be 10 or 15 pounds overweight and they are, they just bash you. I mean, imagine just a regular person, all the, the hate and the negativity we get but then you've got someone who's making their career on stage and people are ruthless about, oh, she's gained this weight or whatever. And I said, if that's what yeah. she needed to do to feel good about her and she couldn't get that weight off, then who am I to say she shouldn't take whatever needs she needs to take to do it? You know, she's, not, yeah. she's not taking drugs. She's not doing all these things. She's doing what she can do to make her life better, to make her career better, and to be happy. So... There are a whole right. lot of people in the world who are the judgment police. And like those people aren't on my team. <laughs> I'm never going to say what anybody else should or shouldn't do with their body. Like it's just not my business. So, you know, you know for me, I'm like, it makes you better. You know, there are all kinds of women. I have women all the time who say, do you think it would be vain if I had plastic surgery? Are you kidding? I've had plastic surgery from on every inch of this body. You know, I... <laughs> I have a skin where people shouldn't even have skin. You know, I mean, ridiculous amounts of skin, I guess I should say. And so I'm all about if it makes you happy and you're not hurting anybody else, then do you. Do what's going to make you happy, what's going to make you healthy, because you're the only person living your life. And sadly, so many people have an opinion about what we should and shouldn't do. And, you know, I put my own surgery off for several years because... People were like, oh, you shouldn't have surgery. Like, that's such an easy way out. And da, 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 da. And I cared about what they thought. I gave these people who, guess what, aren't even in my life anymore, a whole lot of weight and decision power in my life when it was my life and what I needed to do for me. And that's one thing I do regret. I wish I had gone back and had the surgery four or five years earlier. Like, I had, in, you know, investigated it. I'd researched it. I'd gone to the orientation but I got such negativity back from coworkers and friends and family that I shelved it. And like, I really wish I could have done, I wish in hindsight, of course it's always 2020, but I wish I would have done it sooner. Yeah. And you know, the whole do you be you for you is so important, you know? And I think, um, Part of the misery, I think, even is just that we do try to live by what other people think we should do. That is miserable. And when we figure that out, and it's it's hard. It's not easy. Right. But it's hard. But the minute we figure that out and we start making choices for ourselves, the way God created us to do in the first place, um, it's, it's a really freeing place to be. Um, and you just talked about your team and I wanted to read this little part that you'd written. And you said, you said, um, let's see. You said, here's my advice for anyone considering any major life decision. Oh, boy. You said, or surgery, but any major life decision. 
If you have negative people on your roster, cut them from your team right now. No one who is in your corner is going to feed your mind with negativity. Right. Now, listen, if you're in a relationship, y'all, or you got a close friend, y'all, that's dealing you that negativity, it sucks. Like, it's really rough. Right. But we can, you can set boundaries around that relationship, yeah. whether they're living with you, not living with you, um, just around you. And you can still love them. You can still love them, love them where they're at. But you can set boundaries for you, which makes you the healthier person. And when you start becoming a healthy person, those people who are not so healthy are going to try to rear their ugly heads because they don't know how to act. They don't know how to act right. Like <laughs> they are showing themselves in every way, like ah, because they're reacting, they're not responding. And when you start responding in a healthy manner, um, they go crazy because they're like, whoa, wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to like fight this out with our words or fight this out, you know, in some way form that's familiar to them. It's comfortable to them. And so we have to stop that pattern sometimes. I mean, like anything easier said than done, but if you just start somewhere with those steps, start somewhere with those little tiny steps and getting people who are in your corner and y'all that might only be one person. That might only be two people. That might be no one in your physical realm. But I'll tell you right now, Kelly Gunter's in your corner. I'm, I'm in your corner. You know, I loved that you posted, I think it was last week, of the girl that she posted a picture and she was absolutely gorgeous and had put a, a filter. Don't we all use We use filters. They're fun. Why do you think Facebook has them? Because people use them. Snapchat, Instagram. It's all in the part they're making millions of dollars y'all because of filters okay and somebody comes and rears their ugly head against this person because they can't deal with their own crap so they're like attacking her and i'm like are you kidding me and kelly posts like y'all let's show this woman the love right. okay so if you don't have somebody in your corner i promise you there are people out there that you can talk to that will be in your corner mm -hmm. okay so me, Callie, lots of people that we love and can refer you to. There are support groups for this, people who need. Now, if you're in a support group and they're being all ne negative and they're on the drama and they're talking about all the yuck, yuck, get out of there. Right. Get out, go away, run as fast as you can, <laughs> turn the other direction. Um, and Kelly, before I read this, I kind of have my my probably my favorite paragraph in the whole book. Like I, I underlined it. I started, I earmarked my page and I want to read it before we go. But before we do, I want to make sure that you, is, is there anything else that you want to share with everyone um, about your, yourself or, or your book? I want to make sure they know how to get your book. I want to make sure if they want a water bottle and a tiara and a sash, y'all, Y'all, I love this. Okay, you know why I love this? Because I hate my water. Like, I love drink. I love water, but getting my water in is tough. And so when you think to yourself mentally, I got to drink, you know, six bottles of water. I don't have to do that. I drink two. Okay? Two to two because they're 32 ounces. So I can get two or three of these, and it feels like nothing because it's only two instead of six or eight. It's like a mental game I have to play with myself. And so I love your water bottles. Um. And so if y'all go, go to kellygunter.com, um, get it, get her book. You have to get her book. Um, and I hope that you guys learned something today about the journey. You can reach out to me. Um, and, and if you, if you're not familiar with my story, um, I'll share that another day, but long story short, you know, weight's been a battle. I have a whole slew of kids. Um, I've been up and down on high roads, low roads and all the in between roads. And I've kind of been through the gambit and through it all. And so I can, if pretty much I can relate to you in one way or another, and I would love to hear your story. I thrive on hearing people's stories and I would love to figure out how to help you take your purpose and passion in life and figure out how to make that something you can do every single day of your life without having to worry about what's in the bank account or having to go here and do this so that you can provide um, for your family. So that's what I love to do. And that's what um, I continue to do. And if I can help you with that, please let me know. Um, so Kelly, is there anything else that you have? Um, I guess the one thing I kind of wanted to follow up on with what you were saying is, 
I like people to really get that, you know, in the book I share that no one supported me except my friend Lori. My family was against it. Everybody was against it. And so it was an incredibly difficult decision to make. And then as you start losing the weight, you lose people left and right. And so I think it's just like incredibly important to realize just because someone's in your circle doesn't mean they're in your corner. There's a big difference. Very good. And so, and don't feel like I always say, like you said, people are very comfortable with how we are today. People, when I was 391 pounds, all of my friends were very comfortable with that being who I was. So when I start to change that equation, I was less than everybody. And I'm not saying that they thought, oh, I'm greater than her. But because it's a self-conscious thing, it's, it's subconscious. And so, but if in any mathematical equation, if there's a less than, then there's a greater than. So we've all had these right. people who are beside us, but they feel greater than us in our presence. And that gives them a boost and a lift. And again, I'm not saying that's a conscious thing on their part. But as we start to lose weight and we start to change our appearance and ultimately change how we feel about ourselves, it messes with that equation. And all of a sudden we're equals and we're not less than, and then, and it's starting to change and they're really uncomfortable with it. Then the next thing you know, the less than has switched and we're on the greater than side. And that, right. Will, and even when they see that coming, they get really, really scared and they start acting up. And I tell people all the time, it's a simple mathematical equation. When you have someone who's okay with you being less than, don't feel bad about subtracting that person from your life, you know, because you're going to yeah. lose people and it's going to be surprising who you lose. It will. You are. And, and Mary, I love, she <laughs> said, so make sure the people in your boat are rowing and not drilling holes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let them drill some holes in your boat. So. They're going to go down Whoa. with them. They will go down with you. Yeah. Um, there's a whole lot of sabotage. They will try to drag you down. People, I mean, our own friends, our family, they sabotage us because it makes them look at themselves. And people always think, well, that, ha that has to be someone who was, like, now I'm smaller than them. Not necessarily. You can have thin friends and thin relatives who are just threatened by the fact that you feel good about yourself because it makes them look yeah. at them, and they really don't. And that's not saying they're terrible people but there are people, people out there who are hurting and they don't respond well to us becoming whole and healthy and moving to our best selves. And those are people, it's okay to leave those people behind. It's gonna happen, they're casualties of this surgery and this journey, but when it happens, just know that you know your future isn't tied to anybody who left. And that, that goes across the board, guys. Like, it, this is not just about, you know, weight loss or that kind of journey. This is literally any journey you're taking. When you are stepping into your greatness and your worth and your value of what you have to offer the world, people will leave. Or you will have to ask them to leave. Because um, we have there there is a wonderful message by td jakes if you go on youtube you can find it it talks about the three people in our lives you know it's the constituent the constituents the comrades and the oh shoot what's the third but basically it's your oh and your confidants right so your confidants are your people who are in your corner not your circle your corner that's a very few and far between you have, um, the other two are people who are for what you're for. Like, for example, if you're a Jesus freak, then they're great. But the minute you decide, oh, I'm not a Jesus freak anymore, they're like, oh, I'm out, right? <laughs> yeah. um, that's just one example. Um, and then you've got the people who will come fight with you for a cause that you have. They'll stay, doesn't matter what your belief system is, they'll step up behind you for the cause, but then the minute the cause is done, they step back. And so these people will come in and out of your lives. And so if you, if you haven't heard this message by T.D. Jakes, you got to go listen to it because it really is so true, especially if you are chasing any kind of greatness in your life and becoming the best you that you can be. Um, you will encounter this a lot. And it's, um, matter of fact, there's a, um, I'm just learning about imposter, Im imposter syndrome. Um, and if you go read it on imposter syndrome, it's a, it's an incredible deal. People, 
I'm like, whoa, wow. I just identified something that was a huge part of my life. I didn't even know. No one ever brought that up to me, but I was like, oh, that that's what happened to me. Like, um, and so it's kind of this similar thing. Like you're, you're walking through this path and, um, people don't necessarily get it and they fall away, you know, or they don't get it and they're negative and you have to set some boundaries and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like it is okay to do that. Right. Um, I want to leave everybody with the, well, first of all, make sure everybody knows your websites and how to get the book. Okay. The website is, I mean, you can go to kellygunter.com. A lot of people spell my name wrong. So the, also you can go to, you have such a pretty face.com. It's the same website and you can get the book, the water bottles, the t-shirts all there from the website, or the book is also available on Amazon. It's at Barnes and Noble online. So, um, that's all the, that's awesome. yeah, the ways that you can get the book and, and, but the other stuff, the t-shirts and the water bottles, you have to get through my website. Okay. And I love that y'all. I am so blessed and so humbled that you were willing to come and, and share your story and share everything. And I want y'all to go and support Kelly. She's supporting you in the best way God has created her to do. And I want y'all to go support her, um, which will only help you in turn. Um, I want to leave y'all with this, this paragraph because, um, I'm just like looking over it. It makes me emotional. Oh, this is that good, y'all. It is that good. Don't get me ugly crying. Okay, on it's on page 100. Go get your book. Pull out page 100. And it says, at the root of our soul, hope is alive. Begging to be released and begin its journey. Attempting to ultimately deliver us to its intended destination of love, peace, and happiness. Along the way, if we find the capability to listen in quiet solitude, we will hear the voice of God whispering, I am here. He will prepare our way, open our needed doors, and sprinkle our path with angels to assist us. Oh, way to go. And you get me crying on Facebook Live. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I just want to, I want to take a, like the big vinyl lettering, like from the cricket or silhouette machine and just stick it up here. <laughs> just stick it up here because... That could not be more beautiful if God, I mean, obviously God wrote that through you. That, it could not be more beautiful than if he had penned it him actual self. And um, just what a blessing that you shared with all of us today. And I want to thank you for that. And uh, thank you. if any of you guys need anything, please don't forget to reach out to either one of us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And don't sell yourself short on this one. This girl won Nashville Star. She said, oh, I'm the mother of nine and da-da-da-da-da. Like, she has an amazing voice. You say God comes with me in my writing, which I completely agree. God wrote that book. But um, he comes out of you when you sing. So he's everywhere. Thank you. Like, you can't even have a conversation with you and not say, hi, God. So, um <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate thank like, you us getting together and being able to to have this conversation and I'm like glad that you invited me so anytime anytime awesome well I look forward to the next one y'all have a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon okay bye bye